when we start to tell stories about these principles in practice, well then we create examples of excellence that the rest of our team and our business can go out there and emulate. Once you've told the story, you need to select the best story. When I say best, I mean the story that most deeply reflects that particular code principle. And that really a great story demonstrate how to get committed by rewarding yourself. Yes. Yes. Putting this reward out. And then, uh, change. What's that? Judge. story that I'm telling is not actually something that happened to me but to one of the ladies and it's been passed on from generation to generation it happened about a week ago so so <laughs> it was a, a yearly tracker cycle tour and they do this for charity so the lady that this happened to she's the uh, commercial director for for tracker in South Africa and she drove the sweeping vehicle that's actually behind the cyclist. And if something happens, then they're behind them and they can assist. And in this group that she was uh, following, the, the CEO of a company, this guy actually cycled with his iPhone, brand spanking new in his shirt. And as he drove, this thing fell out, fell on the ground, and another vehicle drove over it. So his iPhone was busted. And everybody that has an iPhone or a BlackBerry, basically whole life is stored on that thing. Unaware that his, uh, his iPhone fell out, he carried on with the race. And this lady that was in the back of the car saw what happened and she uh, picked it up and started asking whose phone and eventually found out it was this guy that um, the phone was that they have. And she started while he was still doing the race and doing the tour, she purchased a new phone for him, went to his company, um, got all his information, loaded onto that phone, his contacts, his emails, everything was already linked up to this new iPhone. With all that that she did, her own taking her own money and her own time to actually help this guy that they have not yet done business with. And when he finished the race on the last day, she was actually standing at the finish line with the new phone and handed it to him. Just think about what stories are told by the guy who was handed his phone by that tracker consultant. Think about the goodwill to track it. You're now telling a story from another organization <laughs> um, that involves other people. Think about how many other people have been told the story. We're talking about doing something extraordinary. That's only when we'll tell a story. We'll tell a story when there's something out of the ordinary. And so the question is, what stories are being told about you right now? Cape Town, it's the biggest squatter camps, I think, in Soweto. I went there and a lot of energy, vibe, a lot of activities. And we went there with two or three friends and we say, why we do not build something in this organization just to open a bit the mind of the kids? So we're going to create a cinema workshop there. And we say, kids, there is one rule. You have to arrive every Saturday at 3 p.m. on time. First Saturday, no one. Yeah! <laughs> Second Saturday. No one. Yeah. <laughs> what I want to tell you is that we were struggling a lot to get those kids on time. And we were struggling with one particular kid. His name was Senzo. Every Saturday, I was like getting, Senzo, I can't understand. You are not on time. On this I was really like really pissed off. And we decided that Senzo would be fired. We say Senzo is not making it. So Senzo is not committed. So Senzo is going to be out. So... I went to talk to his mother and I say, excuse me, mama, I'm sorry, but Senzo is not making it. And uh, we tried and he's not communicating and uh, we can't. And she looked at me and she said, but Sandra, I have to tell you something. Senzo, Saturday afternoon, he has to leave at 3 p.m. to go to the hospital because it's HIV positive. And he didn't want to tell you because he's ashamed. And because in our community, we don't tell when we are HIV positive. I felt... <laughs> I felt so, like you deeply feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know when you say you completely misunderstood everything. It's quite emotional for me because today I'm quite close to Senzo and we are trying to, to find money for his study. As you saw, stories are not always about showing yourself as a hero. <laughs> 
Seven Habits of Highly Effective People voted the best business book of the 20th century. The one habit that Covey's asked to do presentations on more than any other, he says, is seek to understand before you understood. You probably know Baker's Biscuits, the lemon creams, and the, uh, and the various biscuits they make. They're all handmade by handmade recipes. And the processes that the guy had developed to make the biscuits were very much like you would do it in your own kitchen. All that had happened was, in terms of making the biscuits, they just duplicated and made bigger the same kitchen processes. So it was very, very, very old and antiquated. And one of the section managers was looking after this mixing room, the places where we were making the dough. And I said to him, look, this is a problem. It's not really working very well. We've got some quality issues. We've got losses issues. We're making the wrong doughs at the wrong time. The consistency between the doughs is wrong. Please go and sort it out. And then he said to me one day, he said, Andy, this weekend we're going to make some changes and I'd like you to come and have a look at the factory on Monday. So on Monday morning, he very proudly came into my office and said, right, come, let's go and have a look at the factory. He went up to the factory and over the weekend, he demolished all the walls in the whole mixing room. All the walls had gone. Suddenly this little broken up closet space where there were larders full of uh, fat and lard larders full of stuff, all disappeared. It's all open plan. And he'd structured the thing in a flow. So instead of having lots of individuals making up a particular batch of dough, he had people who were weighing out the flour. He had people who were weighing out the butter. He had people who were weighing out the little ingredients and the flavors. And this process system that he'd put together was revolutionary. It changed the way we made the biscuits. It improved the quality of the biscuits, improved the quality of the dough. It increased the throughput by more than 30%, just by doing a simple thing. And what was so cool about that was um, the section manager had done all that without, by taking a huge risk. And without me really having to, to worry about it, I mean, the, the, the empowerment part, part of it is the trust given in the person to go and do it. But then getting something unexpected. Suddenly, you came in in the morning, and the place was completely different. It was completely unexpected. The, wall, the walls were gone, but the result was outstanding. So what a great story about, again, leadership, isn't it? That leadership is not about micromanagement. Leadership is not about dictating exactly what is going to be done. That when you give people the opportunity to think for themselves and come up with ideas, they break down the walls. Yeah, so Justin is, uh, is indeed correct. Uh, um, Sandra and I met with them and we were like, Ish, you know, these guys that we work with, you know, what stories are they going to tell? You know, are we going to sit here and fall asleep because we party too hard the night before? And um, it's just wonderful to hear the stories that we've, that we've heard today and to realize all the stories that sit within us and how we can use that very powerfully as a leadership tool. And I challenge you to go and create those stories and to use this tool with your teams um, because we have some absolutely amazing stories to tell. Justin, you've given us a, a fantastic tool. You've inspired us. You've created something that we probably thought would not be possible. Thank you so much for what you've given us.